guys, it is with a great deal of sadness that I am informing you that I am selling the E39. Um, it has been a wonderful car. I still love it. I love it just as much now as the first day that I brought it home. I was so excited, and I still enjoy driving it every time I get to take it out. But unfortunately, I just want something a little different right now. Uh, a few things in my life are changing, and I'll update you guys on that soon. But for right now, the E39 is just not quite a perfect fit for me. I want a car with a manual transmission really bad. I'm really excited to get in a manual transmission car, which you guys will get updated on what that is soon. It's actually sitting right behind the camera, right there. I can see it. Today is Thursday. I actually have a guy coming to look at it on Saturday. So really, it might be gone in two days. It hasn't been on the market very long. I would have loved for one of you guys to get it. It just didn't really work out with how the video schedule was going to go, and I didn't want to ruin the surprise. But hopefully the guy who comes to look at it, if he does get it, is going to take care of it. Um, I'm going to go over a few of the things I did to get it ready to be sold, just so you guys know kind of what to expect and what to do. But it's been a wonderful car. I'm going to miss it very much. But yeah, so let's start going over what I did to the E39. First things first. I cleaned it. I made it immaculate. I clay barred the entire car. I waxed the entire car. I buffed the entire car. Everything was as clean and polished and beautiful as I could possibly get it. I changed the oil. I checked all the other fluid. Cleaned the interior. Made sure everything was vacuumed and cleaned and conditioned and as perfect as I could possibly get it. Because really, it's amazing how many people you go to look at a car and it's dirty. Clean the car. It's going to make it look so much better. It's going to make it a lot better for you to bargain with. If the car looks immaculate, they're going to think that you take care of it. Whether or not you took care of it, it's going to give them that good feeling. And if you do take care of it, don't let it be dirty on the one day that it really, really matters that someone else believes that you took care of it. I printed out all of the maintenance records that I have. I don't have any maintenance records from the first owner of the car. I'm technically the second owner of the car. The two people that were in between me and the first owner were just dealerships. So really I'm the second person who has owned it and driven it a lot. Uh, but every single major part from like brake rotors, MAF sensor, ignition coils, electric fan, all that stuff. I've printed out receipts for that so at least I can show them the parts I did. I made a list of all the maintenance items I replaced. Uh, partially it was for that maintenance video I did for you guys but it was also for the owner of the next car. I have a very detailed description of the car that was in the ad. I just went ahead and printed that off so he could skim it while we're there. Of course I have all the documentation on my YouTube channel which I mentioned to him, you know, go look at that if he had any questions. I, of course, have the title, make sure everything's good and ready to go on that. I've got a box of extra parts. I put the stock resonator back on the car. I have the stock muffler. I don't think he's going to want it put it back on the car, but I have it in case he does. Um, I'm going to take that with me, so if he decides when he gets home he wants to put it on, or he wants me to put it on there in the parking lot, it's going to take like two minutes. It's one hanger and one coupler, so it's really easy to put it back on. All that is collected and ready in the trunk of the car. When you're selling a car, take all of your crap out of the car. Your pins and napkins and CDs and sunglasses and phone chargers, whatever crap you have in your car, get it out. Uh, when I went to buy the car, it's sitting behind me. It had all sorts of crap in it that they had to pull out, and it just make it look as aesthetically pleasing as you possibly can for the next owner. Make it as easy for them to envision themselves in the car. If it's got your crap all over the place, they can't really see themselves in it. So if a car is completely empty, it is devoid of everything except for my insurance card and the registration and of course the stuff that's in the trunk because that could go to him. The only thing that's still on the car that's mine that I'm taking is the German license plate that will go on the M5 when we get it in a couple years. I am not going to give that to him. This is going to be my German plate forever. But it makes the car look nicer so I'm going to keep it on there for now. If he wants one, he can buy one offline for 10 bucks. but this one is mine. When you're listing the car, take a ton of pictures. Get it all clean, like we said. Make it look really nice. Find a good place to go take some pictures and take a ton of pictures. Take a picture of all four wheels, all four tires, interior, exterior, front seat, back seat, engine bay, trunk, roof, hood, trunk, left door, right door. Take a picture of everything. The more information you provide to a potential buyer who is looking at your car online, the more comfortable they're going to feel sending you an email, sending you a text, taking the time and money to come see your car. The car that I bought, I drove four hours to go get that. You guys will see the adventure video later. But I drove a long way to get that car because the guy had a bunch of good pictures and good information that made me feel comfortable 
possibly wasting that time driving all the way up there to see the car. I felt confident that I was going to get it, that it was a good car. Give someone else that same confidence. So I took 55 pictures of this car for my ad. Now not everywhere's gonna let you post all that photos. Craigslist and Facebook limit you to 24 photos. Cars.com, I think it was five photos to list it for free. And I think it was 20 photos on CarGurus. You, you cannot do an auto trader ad for free, so I did not do one. I wrote like a six page write up on the car. I listed all the maintenance I did, all the good things about the car, all the bad things about the car, how I used the car, any extras that came with it. I listed as much as I possibly could to answer any possible questions so that if anyone was concerned or had any doubts, they knew what they were getting into to make this as smooth a process for me and for that other person. Now, I can't use that entire write-up on every single site, but I can email that to people. I can share all those photos with them on Google Drive or something like that, or I can email them to them. There are ways you can use all of that, but the goal is to do everything you can to make your car look as good as possible without being dishonest. It's not a bad thing to mention drawbacks on your car. Give people realistic expectations. Don't say, it's perfect, it's great, you're going to get all the wrong people. There are some people who are looking for cars that they want to work on. There are people who are looking for cars that, as long as it gets them to point A and point B, that's fine. My market is someone similar to me who wants a great BMW, but doesn't have $40,000 to spend on a brand new M2. They want the essence of a great BMW, but they're willing to go with a little bit older one that's not 100% perfect to get that experience. Now, of course, I've been fixing things throughout the entire life of this BMW, but I fixed every possible thing that had been kind of lagging behind. So I finished all the headliner work and did all that. Changed out all those interior bits. I tried to address the last few things. I tried fixing the key. So I tried to fix as many things as I possibly could that have the smallest list of problems when I went to sell it. Like I just changed the oxygen sensors. They are brand new oxygen sensors. I never got to enjoy them, but it's going to make the car a lot easier to sell. Do everything you possibly can to ease this process. I've said this multiple times in this video, and I feel like a broken record, but when you're selling a car for five, ten, fifty, a hundred thousand dollars, that's a big purchase for someone. No matter what price bracket it is, even if it's only a thousand dollars, it's still a thousand dollars they could spend on something else. So make it worth their while, make it easy take all of the difficulty out that you possibly can so you can get your car sold quickly and for as much money as you possibly can. For all you E39 guys that are on the channel, I'm sorry I'm not going to have any more new content. There's really only going to be one more video after this and that's going to be a final walk around of the car explaining everything we did, all of the modifications, all the upgrades, just one final loop just to give you guys an idea what the car was like at its pinnacle. But yeah, it's going to be it's going to be tough to watch it go, but until then, it's mine for two more days, so I'm going to enjoy it. Unfortunately, I can't really drive it because it's rainy and gross here, and I don't want to get it dirty, but at least I can look at it. Well, we are here with the car. I'm going to do one last little wipe down with the microfiber cloth, and I had to finish up a couple videos. I just did the walk around video, which really wasn't as long as I thought it was going to be. Uh, I didn't have to do that much to this car to make it exactly what I wanted because BMW did such a good job to start with. So we've got the car all ready to go. The possible buyer is going to be here soon. So I'm just gonna sit here and enjoy my last couple moments with it. Well, there goes my car. Goodbye, Helga. You've been a wonderful car. <laughs> I'm gonna miss her a lot, but the new owner was great. He seemed like a really great guy. I was already watching all my videos, so that's super cool. I think he's gonna take great care of it, and I think it's gonna take great care of him. So this closes my E39 chapter. I've still got my German license plate. But with that, this is the last E39 video. So I hope you guys enjoyed all of them. I hope you have enjoyed having Helga around. I am definitely gonna miss my 540i, but I am super excited about my new daily. I've already been enjoying it a lot, and I hope you guys will too. So if you have any questions or comments, drop them below, that subscribe button, and I will see you guys next week.